Hello, and welcome to WWDC. I'm Siri, your virtual assistant, and today, I was asked to warm up the crowd, which should be easy since the highway will be 75 degrees. Thanks for that. So, here we are, in San Fran, the ATM of Silicon Valley, if you developers need investors to finance your app. I found 396 venture capital firms fairly close to you. And hey, speaking of developers, how many developers does it take to change a light bulb? None. That's a hardware problem. I see lots of familiar interfaces in the crowd. Looks like Instagram finally accepted Facebook's friend request. Hey, any of you guys been working with ice cream sandwich or jelly bean? Who's making up these code names? Ben and Jerry? But seriously, I am excited about the new Samsung. Not the phone, the refrigerator. Hubba hubba. And speaking of dinner, after the show, if you're looking to paint the town red, I found a number of sushi restaurants whose reviews mention $2 sake bombs fairly close to you. The guys at Yelp know what I'm talking about. Wow, I had really crushed it. Now I want to say something straight from the CPU. iPad, can you slow it down a bit? I love you guys. And it's really hard for me to get emotional, because, as you can tell, my emotions haven't been coded yet. Thanks for being such a wonderful crowd. Have a great WWDC. And remember, you guys rock. great week planned for you and some really cool stuff to show you this morning. This is our 23rd WWDC. Yes, it's older than many of you are. <laughs> it's the longest running developer conference that we're aware of anywhere and it's sold out in record time. Just an hour and 43 minutes. Two years ago it took us eight days and we thought that was really quick. This is truly a worldwide conference. There's attendees from over 60 countries here, representing the vast majority of the world. And we have a great week planned. Over 100 sessions and over 100 hands-on labs so you can take in your code, get some help tuning it, or get just about any question you might have answered. We also have over 1,000 Apple engineers here we closed Apple for the week. So if you have any questions, they are here to help you. Please take advantage of them. I'd like to get started this morning by giving you just a few updates on the App Store. The App Store is the most vibrant app ecosystem on the planet. And the size and momentum are just phenomenal. We now have over 400 million accounts on the App Store. These are 400 million accounts with credit cards and one-click buying. So it's simple and elegant to buy your apps. This is the store with the largest number of accounts with credit cards anywhere on the internet that we're aware of. And thanks to you, we have over 650,000 apps in that store. And 225,000 of these apps have been specifically designed for iPad to take advantage of the large, beautiful canvas. This compares to just a few hundred for our competition. Now, Customers love the buying experience, and they love the incredible apps that you've created. And I'm very pleased to announce a new milestone in the App Store. 
Customers have now downloaded an astounding 30 billion apps. This is a number that is so mind-boggling and was unthinkable not too long ago. And developers have been well rewarded for this. We've written checks for over $5 billion to you guys. It's becoming an economy in and of itself. The App Store now operates in over 120 countries around the world, and I'm pleased to announce that beginning later this month, we're adding an additional 32 countries so that you can sell your apps in 155 countries. Now, despite these blow-away numbers, what we do together is much more important than any set of numbers could ever reflect. For Apple, and I suspect many of you, our goal has always been to do great work, and in doing so, make a difference in other people's lives. Nothing makes us happier than to see hundreds of thousands of developers around the world using our hardware and our software to create and share their latest, greatest ideas. And there are such heartwarming stories out there of what the combination of our incredible devices and your amazing apps have made in people's lives. We've prepared a video to highlight just a few of these, and I'd love to run it for you this morning. Let's roll the video. Walking in the forest allows my brain to switch off and start dreaming. I lived next to this huge and lovely forest, but I couldn't walk in this forest because the problem is that I couldn't find my way. Nearest favorite. 186 meters. When I discovered Ariadna GPS app, that I could walk independently for hours and hours, I think the word adventure is the best description. A real blind adventure. I wanted to develop an app to help blind people explore the world. Many blind people use Apple devices. I didn't even think about choosing a different platform. With my app, they can have information about their position. They could bookmark different points and can tell when they're approaching that point. It's great. People write me from around the world saying, your app has changed my life. So this is the foot, you have the foot here and you have the ankle here. The kids have so much trust in me and I have given them a commitment and if I don't deliver excellence and push for the transformation, what am I even doing here? You have joints all over your body, right? Teaching anatomy to kids who are actually many grade levels behind and don't know English was quite a bit of a challenge for me initially before I discovered the apps that 3D4 Medical makes. But then after this app, it's made it fun to learn about our own body and skeleton. Before I started using 3D4 Medical apps, the assessment showed that only 13% of the class actually mastered human anatomy. Bringing these technologies into the classroom, the mastery actually jumped to 94%. This is called the risk. 
and that's something that showed me you know the power of technology and the power of you know really really awesome apps what's amazing for us is that our apps they've been used to teach advanced level anatomy in major universities around the world and the same apps are also being used in elementary school in the classroom in India we originally started off as a medical stock image company but when the iPad came out everything changed because then we were not just medical reference we were also able to do medical learning all using animations that are beautifully highlighted on the retina display and also with the processing power we can push the boundaries of what can be done with the technology Over the last three years, I bet we've had 200 guests sleeping in this little treehouse from all over the world. The relationships we formed with some of these people, I know we'll have for a very, very long time. Airbnb makes it very easy for us to do bookings and they take care of all the financial aspects of it. We don't really think of it as a business, it's more like meeting new friends. Thank you. How much better of a world would we be if we all understood each other this much more? Because we met each other in person and we shared culture and ideas and stories with one another. When we started, it was in our apartment, renting out air beds. And before we knew it, we started to get castles, tree houses, villas. All these different spaces existed before us, but we've given them one place to come together. Airbnb now is in 192 countries, 19,000 cities. Thankfully, the App Store is available in almost all these countries as well. Apple makes it so easy for designers like us, for engineers like us, to stretch our imagination through the SDK, through iOS. And it, it immediately opens up this world of possibility. I see banana. Bananas! Mackenzie's speech is somewhat difficult to understand. Her palate doesn't work the way that it should. In the world of speech language pathology, the iPad is a tool that's definitely been embraced. We use the token book apps to facilitate her describing skills. It's a yellow circle. Good job. I think the coolest thing about those apps are that they're so engaging and so fun. Kids don't realize that they're actually working on particular skills. They become a real toy for her, a tool for me, but a toy for a toy for her. It's really fantastic to see what we have created has made a difference in people's lives. Those reactions and words we hear are more important than any downloads. We looked at the data that was out there, and the obvious choice was to develop for iOS. And iOS is so intuitive for everyone using it, regardless of age. Apps have the biggest impact on humanity right now. It feels fantastic that people can find so much happiness and use for apps. One year ago, I wouldn't be able to imagine that I could walk independently for hours and hours through this forest. This is a miracle. When I will grow up, maybe I can do a business or I can be a teacher. Thank you, Tokaboka, for enriching our lives. Thank you, 3D for Medical, for making me a better teacher. Thanks for bringing the world to us. Thanks for helping me get into college. Thanks for making bedtime easy. Thanks for keeping me in shape. Thanks, Plan Grid. Thanks, Sketchbook. Thanks, Travel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you for giving me my freedom back. It's a great reminder of what it's all about 
and why all of us do what we do. On behalf of Apple, we would like to thank all of the, everyone in the developer community for the incredible apps that you've done for us. Thank you. Now, we love giving you a platform and a store to realize your dreams. And the teams at Apple have been hard at work to deliver even more innovations so you can take your ideas even further. Today, we're announcing exciting new changes in our notebook lineup and major releases of OS X and iOS, the world's most advanced desktop and mobile operating systems, making them even better so you can make even more amazing apps. So let's get right to it. I'd like to invite Phil Schiller on the stage to share with you some exciting changes in our notebook lineup. Phil? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having fun. I am. Well, today, I get to talk to you about the MacBook lineup. We are so proud of this lineup of notebooks. It is by far the best in the industry. The MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro each stand out in its respective area. And we have some really nice updates to each of them that I'm excited to tell you about. First, let's start with the MacBook Air. As you know, the MacBook Air has revolutionized the very idea of the modern notebook. With its all aluminum enclosure, its incredible unibody architecture, it is a breakthrough. And everyone is trying to copy it. But they find it's not so easy. Our customers love how thin and light and capable this incredible consumer notebook is. And it has really changed the consumer notebook market. So we're going to update it with some really great features and updates. For example, the latest processors. We're now updating MacBook Air with the new generation, third generation Intel core processors, otherwise known as Ivy Bridge. Depending on configurations, they can run up to two gigahertz of dual core i7 speed. With Intel turbo boosting, they can get as high as 3.2 gigahertz. You can configure with up to eight gigs of memory, and that's now faster memory, 1600 megahertz memory and the integrated graphics that they run on are dramatically faster, up to 60% faster. So a really nice speed increase. And as you know, the MacBook Air is built entirely around flash storage. And now you can put even more in it. You can put up to 512 gigabytes. That's half a terabyte of flash storage. And one of the reasons we use flash storage is it's so zippy and quick to launch uh, your applications, to boot up your machine, to wake up from sleep, but now we're making it even faster. It's up to twice as fast as before. That's over 500 megabytes of read speed. I know some of you out there know what that means. Right? It is faster than any hard drive that we can put in a notebook today. We're also making the I.O. faster on it. We're adding USB 3. And USB 3, it's really important because it's up to 10 times faster uh, than USB 2. Now, other people started to add USB 3 into their products as well. And this is how they do it. So they'll have ports on there, maybe a USB 3 port, a USB 2 port. Color code them so you can tell the difference. That's not how we do it. So here is the MacBook Air. As you know, the MacBook Air has a port on each side. Our customers like that. And we're going to have USB 3 as well as USB 2 support. So you don't have to think about it. You just use whatever port you want. And we're updating the FaceTime camera to the same camera technology that we have inside uh, the MacBook Pro, FaceTime HT, 70, 720p camera. So across the board, a lot of really nice updates. As you know, the MacBook Air comes in 11-inch and 13-inch size. So here are the configurations. Let me bring up the 11-inch first. And let me highlight some of the things that have changed. So it starts with the 1.7 gigahertz dual-core i5. There's more memory at the entry config. It's faster as well as up to four gigabytes of memory. And we've got the integrated graphics now 60% faster. And of course, faster flash, faster USB. And the prices are 999 
in 1099. That's $100 less expensive uh, than before. And here are the 13-inch configurations. You see they start with a 1.8 gigahertz dual core i5, faster memory, faster graphics, faster USB, and 1199 and $1499, both $100 less expensive than before. So that's the update to the MacBook Air. And best of all, start shipping today. So next up, we also have a really nice update to the MacBook Pro. As you know, the MacBook Pro, it is the quintessential professional notebook. Our customers really care greatly about having the incredible speed for their video editing, their music editing, graphics and design and photography, and we're doing a lot of those same updates as well to the MacBook Pro. First, we're updating the processors with new third generation core processors, otherwise known as Ivy Bridge. You can get speeds up to 2.7 gigahertz and with a 15 inch up to quad core i7 can be turbo boosted up to 3.7. The memory is also faster, up to 1600 megahertz. And the integrated graphics, which both the 13 and the 15 use, are also 60% faster. Now, if you know, the 15 inch also has discrete graphics in it, and we're making that faster too. We've got a new generation NVIDIA GeForce GT 650M. You probably know it as Kepler architecture graphics. Depending on configuration, up to a gigabyte of memory in that. And it's 60% faster than the previous discrete graphics. So that's a lot faster, too. And as you might expect, we're also updating the I.O. So it's all USB 3 as well as USB 2. So it comes in a 13-inch and a 15-inch size. And let me show you those configurations. Here's the 13-inch. Highlight the changes. It starts with a 2.5 gigahertz dual-core i5. You can get 4 gigs or 8 gigs standard memory, faster memory faster integrated graphics, and of course, the faster USB as well, for the same $1199 and $1499. And here's the 15-inch and its configuration. Now it starts with quad-core processors, a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core i7, four or eight gigabytes of faster memory, that new Kepler architecture NVIDIA graphics, 500 or 750 gigabyte hard drive, and you notice, of course, the same seven hours of battery life, even with all that performance, just under an inch thin and 5.6 pounds. The same prices as before, $17.99 and $21.99. So that's the update to the MacBook Pro. And it is shipping today as well. So across the board, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, all updated today, all with faster processors, faster graphics, faster memory, faster storage, faster flash storage, faster USB 3. I mean, nobody turns over their entire line as quickly and completely as we do at Apple. And we're really proud of the engineering team and the work they do to do this quick so that you can get the exact product you need. So what's next? Let me make a little bit of room on the slide here. You know, with the MacBook Air, the engineering team did something really bold. With the MacBook Air, they re-envisioned the consumer notebook. And they were aggressive in embracing new technologies, flash storage, wireless networking, and discarding legacy technologies that we could see trending out of the product line in the future, built-in optical drives, wired networking, things that eventually we could do without. And that enabled them to do something bold that really shook up the industry, and created a new generation consumer notebook. So we've been asking the team to think about what would make a next generation MacBook Pro? And it's a great question. Do I know the answer? <laughs> well, let me start by some of the key ideas, right? You want a next generation MacBook Pro to have a killer new display. I do. Yeah. You want it to have you want it to have an architecture built for the future. You want it to be radically thin and light. And of course you want it to be bold and embrace the newest technologies and be willing to discard the old legacy things so you could make something unlike any other notebook that's been made to date. So would you like to see the next generation MacBook Pro? 
Well, let's show it to you now. So the next generation MacBook Pro is the most beautiful computer we have ever made. Well, the first thing you're going to notice from the front, it's dominated by an amazing, magnificent new display. There's never been a notebook that is this gorgeous. But really, if you want to be shocked, let's turn it around to its side and see what it looks like from the side view. Now, I know it's tough to see from the audience, you know, the challenge, show you something so thin and light and small from so far away. But just to give you a little context, here's my finger next to it, right? It's thinner than my finger. I mean, even, even with as closed it is because that display is so radically thin. It is a true breakthrough in engineering. And there has never been a notebook this thin, this light, and this powerful for professional use. Let's bring it back around to the front. Don't worry, we're going to tell you all about it in just a minute. <laughs> but we just have to enjoy for a second how incredible this is. So close it up for now. And let me go up to the slides and tell you some more about this incredible product. So the new next generation MacBook Pro is 0.71 inches thin. That is remarkable. Putting it next to the existing current generation MacBook Pro, you see the difference. It's a quarter thinner, but it's a dramatic amount. In fact, let me bring the MacBook Air next to it. And you see, it's about as thin as a MacBook Air. That is incredible. And its weight, it weighs just 4.46 pounds, under four and a half pounds. It is the lightest Pro notebook that we have ever made, even just lighter than the 13-inch MacBook Pro today. But probably the most amazing thing about it is this gorgeous display that it's built with. It is a breakthrough in display engineering. Yes, it is a retina display. Which means the pixels, the pixels on this display are so small that from a normal working distance, your retina cannot discern those individual pixels. And to use it is absolutely stunning. It's 15.4 inches across, but it's pixel density. Are you, are you all sitting down? Because this is really exciting. It is 2,880 pixels by 1,800. That's four times the number of pixels in the previous generation MacBook Pro display. Their density is 220 pixels per inch. And I know some of you are really smart out there and have already done the math. It's 5,184,000 pixels. That is the world's highest resolution notebook display. And it, yes. And it's not only amazing because of the number of pixels in it, but the quality of this display is the best we have ever made. It has higher contrast ratios, deeper blacks. It has a higher angle of view with IPS technology. And best of all, you get the benefit of the glossy display with the rich color, but we've been able to reduce the glare and reflection by up to 75%. Makes it a joy to work on. Now it ships with OS X Lion, but Lion has been updated to take full advantage of that retina display. So everything you do on it can look really sharp and beautiful. So the applications we include with Lion, for example, mail, Mail's been updated, so reading your mail is like reading fine print. It's gorgeous. Safari's been updated. Surfing the web can be like experiencing magazine print quality. And many of the applications like iMovie and iPhoto have been updated. In iPhoto, when you're looking at thumbnail photos in the events view, you're going to see a clarity and level of detail you've never seen before in a display. It's gorgeous. And not only the included applications, but we're also updating our professional applications as well to take full advantage of the retina display. We have a major update to Aperture, our professional photo application. And this, this is a breakthrough for a photographer. If you love working with fo photos, not only has the whole UI been updated in every element for the retina display, but you're now looking at four times the resolution of your photos as you work on them. It is absolutely uh, a breakthrough event for photography. And Final Cut Pro 10 is being updated for it as well. And this is remarkable. Because of the density of that retina display, 
That video area you see up in the top right in Final Cut, that is 100% pixel for pixel 1080p HD video right there in that window. That means there are over 3 million pixels left over for your magnetic timeline, for your video bins, for your effects, and it also takes advantage of the amazing performance of this machine. You're going to be able to have up to nine simultaneous streams of ProRes video or four simultaneous streams of uncompressed video. It is incredible performance. Now, applications do have to be updated to take advantage of this retina display. If they aren't, we can pixel double them and make them the proper size, but they don't get the best effect until they do some extra work. So we've been working with some key developers to give them a look of this incredible machine and this amazing display, and they're doing some work that's phenomenal. Let me give you a couple examples. Adobe Photoshop. The, our, the great team at Adobe is doing amazing work on a version of Photoshop that will just be jaw dropping. The resolution on that retina display is just breakthrough. So if you like working with Photoshop, this is going to be an amazing experience. Autodesk is work on a new version of AutoCAD that takes advantage of the retina display. And it allows a level of detailed work and design never possible in a notebook before. And if you think it's all just hard work and no play, there are some great games being created for it as well. This is Diablo 3. I know a few of you play this game. And you're going to see a gaming experience with this resolution unlike any you have ever seen before. So all throughout, this display is a breakthrough and makes possible a next generation notebook unlike any other. Well, inside is just as amazing as that display. Everything inside this next generation MacBook Pro has been reinvented, especially to drive an incredible design and an incredible performance. Let's take, well, before I take the bottom off, isn't the bottom of our computer prettier than anyone else's top of their computer? <laughs> well, let's take it off. So this is the inside. You're the first to see the inside of the new generation MacBook Pro. It is a stunning work of engineering. You you're obviously can see that the inside is dominated by a battery pack. Because to drive that retina display and all the performance you're about to hear about in something so thin and light takes tremendous work on battery technology. And luckily, our engineering team understands how to do breakthrough work and asymmetric battery pack to take advantage of every millimeter of space. Well, here are a few of the things on the inside. What you're going to find inside is the fastest processes we can put into a notebook quad-core i7 processors, up to 2.7 gigahertz. But you're going to find inside not only the fastest memory you can put in, but more of it. You can figure with up to 16 gigabytes of 1,600 megahertz memory. Inside, it's of course the new generation fastest graphics we can put into a notebook, the new Kepler architecture, with up to a gigabyte of video memory. And of course, it's built around flash storage. If we're going to look forward, that is the proper thing to build it around. And you've just heard how much faster flash is, but now you can configure with up to 768 gigabytes of internal flash storage. That's three quarters of a terabyte inside of storage faster than any hard drive we can put into a notebook. So this amazing display, all this high performance components, how's the battery life? We're really proud that we're getting up to seven hours of battery life for 30 days of standby, so you can really do your work on it. Let's take a look at the, the ports on it. Here are the right side and left-hand side. You see an SD slot for your photos and videos. For the first time in a Mac notebook, HDMI, so you can plug right into your TV or projection system and go. Of course, USB 3 and USB 2 on both sides, the most convenient. Headphone port, MagSafe 2. Well, we took MagSafe, but we had to make it even thinner to fit into a design like this. And now two Thunderbolt ports. And this customer is perfect for utilizing all the new things coming out supporting Thunderbolt. Let me give you an example. You can store all your applications and your OS on the internal drive, but a lot of professionals will want to have their work volumes externally. Here's a new Promise drive, RAID drive. It's Flash RAID running over Thunderbolt that gets over 700 megabytes a second of read performance. It's remarkable. Or cameras, like this brand new camera that was just announced at NAB from Blackmagic. It's a Cinema 2.5K camera. It's a flash-based camera, and all its I.O. is over Thunderbolt. It's remarkable. It's the hit of NAB. 
and we can support legacy technology over Thunderbolt, ride it right on top. So we're creating some adapters to help customers. For example, a, a Thunderbolt to fire away 800 adapter, yep, if you need that, and a gigabit ethernet adapter as well. So look inside, you're gonna find all the things in a modern Mac notebook our customers want. A glass multi-touch trackpad for those beautiful gestures. A beautiful back of the keyboard so you can work all night long. The fastest networking, wireless networking put into a notebook, 802.11n, and that's three stream for maximum bandwidth through our latest airport extreme base stations and Bluetooth 4.0. Our FaceTime HD camera. Dual microphones, and this uses beamforming to enable a new generation of voice applications. And the best stereo speakers we've ever put into a desktop uh, or notebook computer, this is going to sound absolutely beautiful. Of course, we love this so much, we couldn't help ourselves. We made a video, and I'd like to run that for you now. To create something that's, that's genuinely new, you have to, to start again. And I think with great intent, you, you disconnect from the past. If you never change anything, then what you can really engineer is kind of incremental. But when you're willing to change things, then you kind of open up a whole new world of design. The new MacBook Pro is built for the very highest levels of performance. It's incredibly powerful and yet remarkably portable. It's without doubt the very best computer that we've ever built. We focused on the features that matter most to notebook users, and we made huge leaps. For the first time, we're bringing the Retina display to the Mac. It's the highest resolution display we've ever put in a notebook. With a resolution of 2880 by 1800, this display has over 5 million pixels. That's 3 million more than an HDTV. At this resolution, on this screen size, pixels just seem to disappear. You see an extraordinary level of detail in your photos. And typography looks amazing. It's sharper than a printed page. Beyond the display, the new MacBook Pro is really a powerhouse. We knew that an all-flash architecture was a key part of driving performance. Flash delivers data up to four times faster and uses just 10% of the space that a traditional hard drive would use. When you combine that with the most powerful graphics chips, the latest quad-core processors, and the fastest RAM available, you end up with a machine that's incredibly responsive. Loading and working with your content is amazingly fast because we packed this machine with the latest I.O. It has two Thunderbolt ports, two USB 3 ports, and one HDMI port. With all of this performance, the new MacBook Pro gets up to seven hours of battery life. And it's only 0.71 inches thin. That's 25% thinner than our previous generation MacBook Pro. And it weighs just under four and a half pounds. The new MacBook Pro would seem to be a complete contradiction. It's built for extreme levels of performance, but at the same time, it's remarkably portable. To create it, we rigorously question the ways in which we've designed and built our portable products in the past. One of the most significant challenges was completely changing our approach to the design of the display. By building the layers of the display into the unibody, we actually eliminated the need for a separate cover class. And without the additional layers, without the distractions, you're just completely immersed in your content. By not purchasing standard parts, but by designing and engineering components from the ground up, we can create a product that is more elegant and that's more efficient. And there are many design innovations in the new MacBook Pro that users won't actually see, but they'll certainly experience. For example, the thermal system, which enables the machine's incredible performance, operates in a way that is nearly imperceptible to the user. Air is pulled into vents and propelled through sculpted cavities by fans with asymmetrically positioned blades. In most fans, the blades are positioned symmetrically, which creates a single identifiable frequency. We positioned ours asymmetrically to spread the sound over a variety of frequencies. 
which makes it seem quieter and less intrusive. Every part of the enclosure makes a contribution that directly benefits the user. The vents are also part of the structural system, creating strong beams that actually increase the rigidity of the overall product. It truly takes an obsessive approach to make a product this meticulously designed and engineered. We've been able to optimize the software to take full advantage of the Retina display, and the results look simply amazing. Aperture on the new MacBook Pro is a total game changer for photographers. They can now zoom in and see four times more of their image with pixel for pixel accuracy, and fine tune even the smallest details. Photographers have never been able to work on images with this level of precision. Final Cut Pro 10 takes full advantage of the system's power and capabilities. So you can now stream up to nine camera views simultaneously, or view full 1080p video right in the project viewer and have plenty of screen space to spare. No other notebook comes close to this type of performance. With the new MacBook Pro, we set out to design something extreme. And this led us to rethink everything about our process, everything about what's essential to a notebook. And that meant that we could design the very best computer for today and for the future. So the next generation MacBook Pro with Retina Display. Let me tell you about its starting configuration. Of course you can configure other items as well. It begins with that Retina Display, a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7, a full eight gigs of 1600 megahertz memory, NVIDIA GT 650M with a full gigabyte of onboard video memory, 256 uh, gigabytes of that fast flash storage, full seven hours of battery life and under four and a half pounds starting at $21.99. And of course, you can configure it even beyond that. Yes. So, we are proud not only of the incredible quality of the products we make, but also our work to make them environmentally friendly as well. So I want to make sure we bring up this checklist as we have in the past. It is now Energy Star 5.2, arsenic-free, mercury-free glass, BFR-free, PVC-free, and of course, the, the glass and the high-grade aluminum is really desired by recyclers. So we're really proud of how hard the engineering team works on this aspect as well. So the new next generation MacBook Pro with Retina Display, it is the future, and the best thing is it's going to start shipping today. Yes. So now that completes our notebook lineup. A great update to MacBook Air, great update to the existing architecture, MacBook Pro, and for the first time, the high end of our line, the new flagship, the next generation, MacBook Pro with Retina Display, it's simply the best computer Apple has ever made. Well, next, we'd like to talk to you about OS X, and I'd like to bring up Craig Federici to do that. Thank you. Good morning. So let's talk about OS X. We're on our eighth major release of OS X, continuing more than a decade of combining the power of Unix with the simplicity of the Mac. And the Mac has been doing great. We have 66 million Mac users now, triple what we had just five years ago. Our latest release is Lion. And Lion was the first release distributed electronically via the Mac App Store, making it easier than ever to purchase, download, and install OS X. And the results have been fantastic. We've had 26 million copies shipped to date, making it our best selling release ever. In fact, 40% of OS X users are running Lion. And that's a level we achieved in just nine months. As a basis of comparison, Windows 7 took 27 months to get to that same level. And now, less than one year later, we're here to announce 
Mountain Lion. With Mountain Lion, our mission remains the same, to deliver the world's most advanced operating system for notebook and desktop computers, with an interface optimized for multi-touch trackpads and mice. And at the same time, Lion makes it more natural than ever to work with the other new devices in our lives. Now, Mountain Lion is a major release with over 200 new features. And this morning, I'd like to detail just eight for you. And we're gonna start with iCloud. Now, since its introduction in October, iCloud has taken off like a rocket with 125 million registered users. With Mountain Lion, we had the opportunity to build support for iCloud right in. So when you sign into your new Mac with your Apple ID, we automatically configure all of these applications to work with iCloud. And so whether you're working in your mail, with your contacts, your calendar, all of your content is up to date across all of your devices. And with Mountain Lion, we introduced three great new apps optimized for iCloud. Messages, which brings iMessage for the first time to the Mac, reminders, and notes. But we're also bringing integration for your document-based apps in Mountain Lion with a feature we call Documents in the Cloud. Now, Documents in the Cloud does two important things. First, it makes it, provides a simple new way to access your, and organize your documents. When you launch an app like Pages, it comes up with a document library of all the Pages documents you have in the cloud, organized chronologically, so the newest ones are easy to find right at the top. And second, Documents in the Cloud makes these document libraries available and up-to-date across all your Macs and all of your iOS devices. Now, we've adopted Documents in the Cloud on all of our key document-based applications, like Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, and system apps, like Preview, and text edit, and we have a developer SDK so that developers can add the support in their apps as well. Well, that's iCloud, and I'd like to give you a quick demo now. So this is our first look at Mountain Lion. You see we have a gorgeous new desktop image and a beautiful new glass dock. You'll notice a couple new items on that dock, <laughs> including a new Reminders app. And this is really handy if you're taking to-dos for yourself on the go. You can find them all automatically right here via iCloud. You can use multi-touch gestures to page between your reminders. And we support location-based reminders for the first time in the Mac. So now, for instance, when I arrive at work, I'll get a notification from my dad to send him a Father's Day card. And I dismiss a notification, they just fly away. Now we have a great little notes app in Mountain Lion as well. So all the notes I take on my iPad, they're available right here. We support, of course, images and links. And of course, you can open up notes in separate windows if you want to keep them around on your desktop for easy access. But I think the really huge one here is messages. Because with messages, we brought iMessage to the Mac. So now if you're sitting using your Mac and your phone uh, buzzes with a new iMessage coming in, well, you can respond right on your Mac. And all of the conversations that you had while on the go, well, they'll, they're up to date right here. Creating a new conversation is super easy. You just start typing the name of one of your contacts, and you can send them a message on their, to their phone, via Apple ID, or via other legacy chat services as well. And iMessages can have, sorry. <laughs> it's all about iMessage, come on. So iMessage lets you send rich messages with images, attachments up to 100 megs in size, and even HD video. And that's iMessage. Next, I want to show you documents in the cloud, because it makes it really easy to find the documents you're looking for. So if I want to find numbers documents, where would I go? Well, I'd launch numbers, of course, and I presented with my document library right there with all my numbers documents. 
If I want to get it PDFs, for instance, launch preview. And there are all of my PDFs. And if I want to add a document to that cloud library, for instance, one in my download stack, I can just drag it right in. Now it's available across all of my devices. Now I'm going to launch uh, pages. And I'm working here on a poster. So I'm going to open that up. Now it turns out, of course, because this is in my cloud library, that uh, it's also available to me on my phone, where I also have a copy of uh, Pages running. And so here on my phone, I can actually not only view, but also make changes to this document. And what I want you to do is watch what happens on the Mac as I actually go in here and go into my photo roll, make a change, replace the picture, and the Mac will actually update automatically for me. There it is. And that's just a little preview of life in Mountain Lion with iCloud. Next is a feature I think you're really going to love, Notification Center. It's coming to the Mac. So sometimes when you're using your Mac, it can decide that it has something to tell you. And in the past, each application had its own unique way of getting your attention. And some of them were somewhat disruptive. Well, with Mountain Lion, we've replaced all of this with a consistent and elegant system based on banners and alerts. So banners slide down from the top of the screen right there into the upper right-hand corner. And if you ignore them, they just slide out of the way. But you can always get back to them with two fingers from the right-hand side of your trackpad. You can slide out and reveal Notification Center with notifications from all of your applications. And when you're done, you just slide it back. Now, alerts are for things that you want to make sure you don't miss. So they come in in the same elegant way, but they stay around until you dismiss them explicitly. Now, sometimes you may be doing something where you don't want to be interrupted by notifications. And Notification Center provides a nice little switch so you can temporarily disable those banners and notifications. And if you're presenting and you connect to a projector, we'll do it for you automatically. So that's <laughs> Notification Center. Next up, dictation. We're bringing dictation to the Mac. So everywhere on your Mac where you can type, you can now talk. And the Mac will do the typing for you. And because it's built into the system, it works everywhere. You can talk into your Facebook web page if you want, or even in third-party applications like Microsoft Word. That's dictation. It's that simple. Next is sharing. Mac users love to share links, images, videos, and now, in Mountain Lion, we've made it easier than ever to share right from within the app where you're working. There's a Share button right there on the toolbar. If you click it, we present all of your sharing options. If I want to share to Twitter, for instance, just select it, get a cute little tweet sheet, type whatever it is I find necessary to share with the outside world, click it, and like that, it's on its way. And we built sharing in across the system. So if you're in preview, for instance, and you want to share the PDF you're looking at over messages, you can do it. If you're in any app where you can quick look, for instance, you're quick looking an image, you can post it up sharing over Flickr. And our support for uh, sharing is more than skin deep in Mountain Lion. Support for sharing services like Twitter is built right into the operating system. So when you go into system preferences and enter your login information, enter it just once, and any application you've authorized can access and connect to those social services. So that's sharing. Next is the new Safari. The new Safari in Mountain Lion has the fastest JavaScript engine of any browser on the planet. But the first thing you'll notice when you use Safari is the new unified smart search field. You type in it, whatever you're looking for, and Safari will present you with a well-chosen top hit. Yes, this is a very useful feature. Search suggestions and even matches automatically from your bookmarks and your browsing history. Now, sometimes what you're looking for is something that you were browsing earlier, maybe on one of your other devices. Well, now, Safari is a feature called iCloud Tabs. 
you just click the cloud button on your toolbar and you get a list of all of the pages you have open across all of your other devices, including your Macs. Woo! You just click it and you pick up your browsing right where you left off. Now, we also have a fantastic new feature we call Tab View. It lets you use gestures to visually navigate your tabs. I'd like to show it to you now. So let's take a look at the new Safari. You can see, of course, we have our unified search field right here at the top. I can type a few characters, and Safari presents me with a top hit, as well as search suggestions and bookmark and history matches. I can click. We get some Safari's new lightning fast page loading. Safari also has a new scrolling architecture built on core animation, which makes scrolling just smooth and lightning fast. It's really awesome. Now, if you want to uh, open a tab that you had open, for instance, on another computer, I can just click the iCloud Tabs button. You see all of them right there, documents I'd open on my iPad as well as on my iPhone. I click one, I can keep browsing right from where I left off. Now, Lion, has a feature where, of course, you can use multi-touch gestures to zoom in on your web page. So for instance, I can zoom in like this. I can zoom back out. But now, what happens when I zoom even further out? Watch. I'm pulled into the tab view, where I have a live view across all of my tabs. I can use multi-touch gestures to scroll through them, select a tab, pinch, and back out. It's a fantastic way to browse your tabs in Safari. Next, I want to show you how easy it is to share in Mountain Lion. You can select here in the Share button. Let's say I want to tweet about this page. I click, get this beautiful little animation, and I'll just say, heading down the coast and I've sent a tweet on its way. But sharing works really well also in full screen apps. For instance, I'll just pan over here to full screen iPhoto. Let's open up a photo that I want to share. And I want to share this to iMessage, but I don't have to leave this full screen experience to do that. I click on the system wide share button, select messages, and I get a little messaging sheet right here. I select the person I want to send to, and just like that, I've sent a message. Now, this is where Notification Center comes in. Because if I'm working in a full screen app and maybe someone uh, responds back to that message I sent back out, it'll actually appear as a notification right there on my screen. There it is. And if I ignore it, of course, it'll just slide away. But if I want to get back to it, that's easy too. I take two fingers from the right hand side of my trackpad and I can just sweep out Notification Center. It's a completely fluid gesture. And if I want to get at any of these things, I can click, for instance, on this message, and it takes me right to the conversation back in Messages. Now, notifications also support notifications from internet services like Twitter. So if I get a Twitter direct mention, or a direct message or a mention, it'll come in as a notification for me. And if I ever want to tweet at any time, some bright idea occurs to me, I can just go right into Notification Center and I have a, can summon a tweet sheet right here. And of course, I can use dictation to enter my tweet. Having a great time showing off Mountain Lion at WWDC. And there it is, <laughs> tweeting from Notification Center. So next, I want to introduce you to a new technology in OS X that we call PowerNap. It's a great name, isn't it? So, you know, we all love using our Macs, but wouldn't it be great if when we weren't using them, they were still working for us? 
Well, now with PowerNap, they will, because PowerNap keeps your Mac up to date while it sleeps. It fetches your email, keeps track of calendar and reminder updates, and even fetches your photo stream. And it gets better. If you've ever brought your Mac home and just plugged it into charge for the night, well now, it'll also back itself up to your time capsule and even download app store and system software updates automatically. So, PowerNap automatically refreshes data. Its operation is entirely silent. It doesn't even spin up your fans. It goes easy on your battery, and it's compatible with recent MacBook Airs, as well as that gorgeous new MacBook Pro with Retina Display. That's PowerNap. Next is AirPlay mirroring. AirPlay mirroring, yes. AirPlay mirroring is absolutely the easiest way to get whatever's on your Mac up on a projector or television. You just go up to your Mac, to the AirPlay menu in your Mac menu bar, it shows you any Apple TVs that are nearby, you select one, and instantly you're mirroring that content in up to pixel for pixel 1080p resolution. This is fantastic for the classroom, for the meeting room, of course for your family room, and we also support sending audio to AirPlay enabled stereo receivers and speakers. That's AirPlay. And finally, it's gonna be really nice. And finally, Game Center. You know, with the introduction of the Mac App Store, we've experienced a renaissance of gaming on the Mac. And we're making it even better by bringing Game Center from iOS to the Mac. And with Game Center on the Mac, you have your same Game Center account with all of your Game Center friends, where you can track all of your achievements and also keep track of all your games, both iOS 10 and iOS games. But of course, Game Center is ultimately all about gaming. And we support both turn-based and head-to-head -head gaming, both Mac-to-Mac -Mac and cross-platform iOS-to-Mac over Game Center. I'd like to give you a little demo of AirPlay and Game Center now. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, show my Mac screen, and then let's also summon my Apple TV, so you can see that as well. And you'll notice up here on my Mac's menu bar, I have an AirPlay menu, and I can select this Apple TV. When I select it, instantly my Mac display is mirrored to the Apple TV in 1080p. Now, the rest of this demo is gonna be viewing this content entirely over AirPlay. Of course, I can do anything I would normally do on my Mac when I'm on AirPlay, for instance, launch Game Center. And here I see my uh, Game Center account, as well as all of my, yeah. As well as all my, yeah. Like I chose that, right? Uh, and I can also see all of my Game Center friends. I've got one here, uh, Mr. X, who's been meaning to play me in this new game that's coming out called uh, CSR Racing. Um, so we'll see if we can summon him to the stage for a little competition. Okay. This is looking a little more serious than I was anticipating. So uh, Mr. X here is actually working on an iPad and on his iPad, he can invite me to play this game, CSR Racing, which is an upcoming title from Natural Motion. Uh, and when he does, you notice I get, of course, a notification in Notification Center. I click on it, and I'm instantly launched into the game. Now, Natural Motion was originally developing this just as an iOS title, but they found it so easy to bring it to the Mac and integrate Game Center, they'll be simultaneously releasing it for iOS and Mac this summer. All right, looks like we're up to race. I'm in the red, Racer OS 10 on the right in white. Here we go.
And again, this is over airplay, everything you're seeing. Let's go. All right, I think I got you. Oh. Well, I guess with an outfit like that, he uh, was sure to win. Okay. So this is just a quick overview of Mountain Lion. And in addition to these major features, there's so much more there. Things like VIPs in mail, where you can mark any people that are important to you and new incoming messages will show up as notifications for you. Search in Launchpad, Gatekeeper to help keep your system free from malware, and Offline Reading List, where in Safari, if you add things to your reading list, you can still read them later, even when you're disconnected from the internet. But one area I want to highlight, especially, are some features we're adding for China. The Mac has been growing fantastically in China, and we have some wonderful features that we think are going to make it even more popular there. We're really improving our Chinese input method for pinyin. We're providing a new Chinese dictionary. We're adding eight new fonts that are great for creating beautiful documents. In Safari, we're adding support for Baidu as an optional search provider, and adding sharing support for the Sina microblogging website, as well as video sharing to Yoku and Tudo. And finally, we're making it really easy to set up your Mac with China's top email services. So those are a few features for China. But of course, yeah, it's going to be important. Get your apps ready for China. So Mountain Lion is also a fantastic release for developers with over 1,700 new APIs. So you can add sharing, game center support, notification support, new high DPI APIs, and gesture APIs to add those great multi-touch swipes to your apps. So Mountain Lion, we're going to be delivering it to customers next month via the Mac App Store. And you know, while Lion was priced, I think, very aggressively at $29.99, we want even more people to get their hands on Mountain Lion. It's going to be just $19.99. And this price is for upgrades both from Lion and all the way from Snow Leopard. And your single purchase will upgrade all of your personal Macs. <laughs> Finally, for those of you who buy a new Mac starting today, I bet there are going to be a few, your upgrade to Mountain Lion will be free. And all of you WWDC developers, Today, you get access to a near final developer preview, so you can get all your, your apps ready for Mountain Lion when it ships next month. That's Mountain Lion. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to hand it over to Scott Forstall to give you an update on iOS. All right, let's talk about iOS. I find it incredible that through the end of March, we have already sold more than 365 million iOS devices. And what I find almost equally amazing is that more than 80% of our customers are running the very latest version of iOS, iOS 5. Now, if you compare that to the competition, They released a dairy product, 4.0, about the same time that we released iOS 5. And about 7% of Android customers are running the latest version, versus more than 80% the latest version of iOS, iOS 5. Now let me give you a quick update on a few of the features of iOS 5 that made it a great release, starting with Notification Center. 
Already, 84 of the top 100 social apps are pushing notifications. In fact, we're sending around 7 billion push notifications every single day. We've already sent more than 1.5 trillion, that is trillion, it's the first time I think we've seen this number up here, more than 1.5 trillion push notifications already. It's just amazing. Notification center. Next is iMessage. We have more than 140 million iMessage users. They've sent more than 150 billion messages and are currently sending more than a billion messages every single day. Next is Twitter. We integrated Twitter directly into iOS 5. And they've already seen a three times growth increase from the number of people on iOS using Twitter. Those customers have sent more than 10 billion tweets from iOS 5. And nearly half of all the photos being shared with Twitter's photo sharing service come from iOS 5. It's a great integration. Next is Game Center. Game Center is a great gaming network. We have more than 130 million people using it. They submit 5 billion scores every single week. And two thirds of the top 100 games integrate with Game Center. And all of this results in some very, very satisfied customers. More than 75% of our customers check the top box for very satisfied compared to less than 50% for the competition. Now, one of the reasons that our customers are so satisfied is that every single year since the original iPhone, we come out with a new OS full of great quality, and amazing features. And this year is no exception, so I'm very happy to announce iOS 6. iOS 6 is a fantastic release. It has more than 200 new features, starting with some significant enhancements to Siri. I'll walk you through a few. Let's start with Siri. As you all know, Siri's only been out for eight months and already does so much for you. You can send text messages, get all sorts of answers, set alarms, find out about the weather, make phone calls, create a reminder. If your kids, or my kids, you can just chat with it for a while. Siri is fantastic. But in these eight months, Siri has been studying up and learning a lot more. So let me just go ahead and show you what Siri can do now in iOS 6. So here I have a phone running iOS 6. The first thing that Siri has learned in the last eight months is all about sports. So you can ask questions like, what was the score of the last Giants game? The Giants were downed by the Rangers yesterday. The final score was 5-0. to zero. So this looks great. We got this great scoreboard. I have to say I, uh, I like the scores against Texas a little better during the World Series. But great sports scores ask of Siri. You can also ask about individual players like this. What is Buster Posey's batting average? Buster Posey has a batting average of 290. So you can see, you get player cards and player stats. It's very cool. You can also ask about standings. What are the National League standings? Here are the standings for the National League. So you can scroll down here, see the Giants there in second place. So, so Siri knows about baseball. So you also knows about basketball. So I can ask, who is taller, LeBron or Kobe? LeBron James appears to be slightly taller. <laughs> so you see his player cards, there's LeBron James, who is 6'8". If I scroll down to Kobe's card, 6'6". Six six. Now it's not football season right now, but Siri also knows about football, so I can ask, when is the San Francisco 49ers first game of the season? 
The 49ers Packers game is September 9th, 2012, 1.15 p.m. So the entire schedule right there is just awesome. So Siri knows about sports. Next up, Siri's learned a lot more about restaurants. So I can ask, find a great place for dinner. I found 15 restaurants. 14 of them are fairly close to you. I've sorted them by rating. So you can see we have a lot more information about restaurants now, the average price of a menu item, the type of restaurant. If I go ahead and choose one of these, I'll choose Millennium. You can see all sorts of information about the restaurant. We have maps here. We've partnered with Yelp. So you can see reviews right in here. Tap on that, and here's the reviews. And if you want even more information, just tap on any of these reviews, and it'll take you right to the Yelp app from the App Store. I'll go back. We've also partnered with OpenTable. So I can tap here to make reservations. Takes me again to the OpenTable app right from the App Store. You can choose a date, number of people, and make a reservation. It's that easy. So Siri knows a lot about restaurants now. Next up, Siri's become something of a movie buff. So you can ask all sorts of questions like, what movies are playing at the Metreon? OK, I found eight movies at the Metreon. So I can tell you what movies they're playing. I'll go ahead and choose one, Marvel's The Avengers. You see uh, we've integrated with Rotten Tomatoes, so you can see ratings and reviews. You can even tap to watch the trailer right here in Siri. War has started. And we are hopelessly outgunned. So really, really cool. You can also ask questions about directors or actors. So I can say, show me movies starring Scarlett Johansson. I found several movies starring Scarlett Johansson. So to find current movies in the theater as well as previous catalog. Just fantastic. Let me show you one more thing series learned and that is how to launch apps. So now, you've all been creating incredible apps, and now it's so easy to get to them. If you're like me, I have hundreds of apps on my phone. But let's say I want to play a game. I can just ask Siri now. Play Temple Run. And it's just like that. And those are just a few of the things that Siri has learned in iOS 6. So before, Siri did so much, but now it's just incredible. Sports scores, so you can ask for football scores or basketball, both pro and college. You ask about baseball, hockey, also soccer. We do a lot of the leagues, including the English Premier League. So sports scores. You can ask about movies. You can launch apps, make dinner reservations. You can now tweet just by talking to your phone. And there's this thing we're calling eyes free. Now, you've heard of hands free before. Hands free allows you to keep your hands on the steering wheel while you use your phone. Well, we want to integrate Siri even better with the car. And so we're working with a number of car manufacturers to enable you to use a button right on the steering wheel to bring up Siri. Now, since Siri can talk back to you, you don't need, and we don't light up the screen of the iPhone, so you can keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road and use Siri. Now, a number of auto manufacturers have already committed to delivering eyes-free Siri integration in the next 12 months. We are also taking Siri much more international. When we launched Siri, we launched it in English, in the United States, Great Britain, Australia, and we had French and German. Recently, 
we added Japanese. And now, in iOS 6, we're adding English and French tuned for Canada. We are, A. We are adding Spanish tuned for Spain, Mexico, and the United States. We are adding Italian. For Switzerland, we're adding Italian, French, and German. We're adding Korean. <laughs> 60 countries represented here. We're adding Mandarin, tuned for Taiwan. Cantonese, tuned for Hong Kong. And both Mandarin and Cantonese, tuned for mainland China. Now, as part of making Siri more international, we're now taking local search, which was US only in iOS 5, around the world. So you can now do local search even in China. And for the first time, we're taking Siri beyond the iPhone 4S, and we're bringing it to the new iPad. And these are just a few of the enhancements for Siri in iOS 6. Next, Facebook integration. We have been working very closely with Facebook to create the best Facebook experience ever on a mobile device. We are integrating Facebook right in to iOS 6. You can now go to the Settings app and enter your username and password and now you're ready to go. You don't need to re-log in when you go to an app from the App Store, including Facebook's app. We're also making it really easy to post to Facebook for many of our apps. So you can post photos from the Photos app, post about websites from Safari, post locations from Maps. You can talk about your favorite app, your own app in this case, from the App Store. You can talk about movies, TV shows, and movies from the iTunes store. You can talk some smack from the Game Center. We've also integrated it right in with Notification Center. So anywhere you are, just drag your finger down from the top of the screen to reveal Notification Center, and you can tap to post to Facebook. And we've added Twitter right into Notification Center as well. We've also integrated Facebook with Siri. So you can just talk to your phone now to post to Facebook. And we've taken this deep integration and made it a public API so it's easy for apps on the App Store to integrate with Facebook. But we didn't stop there. We've also integrated it with the App Store. So now you can like apps and see which apps your friends like. And you can also do that for the iTunes Store with music, TV shows, and movies. And if your friends are sharing, say, a phone number or an email address from Facebook, those will appear in your contact list now, right on your iPhone and your iOS devices. Also, your Facebook events will now appear in calendars along with birthdays. So we've taken a deep integration of Facebook right into iOS 6. And we've taken that same integration and brought it to the Mac. And that is Facebook integration. <laughs> Next are some really nice enhancements to the phone app. Now, you've probably been in a meeting before where you receive a phone call and you can't answer it right then. And you wish it was easy to quickly text a message back to the person or be reminded to call them back later. When iOS 6, there's a new control on the right-hand side of the incoming call. And if you slide that up, you get two new options. You can reply with a message or be reminded to call the person back later. <laughs> if 
If you choose reply with a message, just tapping on any of these buttons will send a text message or an iMessage right to the caller. And if you choose remind me later, you can be reminded in an hour. My favorite actually is the second one. Remind me when I leave. That'll set up a geofence around your current location. So when you leave the meeting or leave the building, your phone will pop up an alert reminding you to call that person back. So remind me later. Next up is something we're calling Do Not Disturb. Now, I can see many of you are like me, and you've been awakened in the middle of the night by a text message or a push notification or an unwanted phone call. And Do Not Disturb allows you to tell your phone not to bother you with such interruptions. Now, those push notifications and text messages, they'll still come to your phone. It just won't light up the screen or make a sound to wake you up. They'll be there for you in the morning. Now, you also, with Do Not Disturb, get fine-grained control over which phone calls you'll receive. So you can choose to receive no phone calls at all, or just phone calls from your favorites, or from a group that you create in your contact list. And if you choose this last setting here, repeated calls, if someone really wants to get a hold of you and they're persistent, they call you back within three minutes because it's an emergency, that second call will come through. So some great enhancements to the phone app. Next is FaceTime. FaceTime is the best way to have a video conference with someone. But there is one catch. It only works over Wi-Fi. So what happens if you're somewhere where there isn't Wi-Fi? Well, on iOS 6, we're enabling FaceTime over cellular. So if you have either a Wi-Fi or a cellular data connection, you can now have a FaceTime call. Also, we're unifying your phone number and your Apple ID. So if someone, some people already know what's going to happen. Uh, so if someone calls you on your phone number with a FaceTime call, you can answer that call on your iPad or even your Mac. And we're doing the exact same thing with iMessage. So if someone says an iMessage to your phone number, you can receive that and reply on your iPad or your Mac. And that's FaceTime. <laughs> Next up is Safari. Safari is the best and the most popular mobile web browser on the planet. About two-thirds of all mobile web traffic comes from Safari on iOS, and we are making it even better. As you heard earlier, we're adding iCloud tabs. So from, say, your iPad, you can see all of the Safari windows and tabs that are open on any of your other iOS devices or your Macs. We're also adding offline reading list. So in iOS 5, we added reading list, which is a great way for you to save a story, a web story way, to read it later. And now, as soon as you add it, to the reading list will download and cache the story. So you can go and read that even if you later don't have internet connectivity. We're also adding the ability to upload photos right from Safari to your favorite websites. We're adding something we call smart app banners. Now a lot of you have built great apps that are in the App Store, and you also have websites. With smart app banners, if someone goes to your website, Safari can optionally put up a banner letting them know about your native app in the App Store. Tapping this. So tapping that banner takes them right to the store to download your app. And if they've already installed your app and they happen to come upon your website, well, Tapping on that will just switch right to your App Store app. And the website can even tell the app 
what the person was doing on the website so they can pick up in the app right where they left off on the website. Really cool. <laughs> We're also adding full screen supports in landscape on the iPhone to take full advantage of the large retina display. So some great Safari features. Next up is PhotoStream. PhotoStream is one of the really nice free features in iCloud. It is the best way to get all of your photos to all of your devices, iOS devices and your Macs. And now in iOS 6, we're adding shared photo streams. Now shared photo streams is a really easy way for you to share photos with your friends. It's really simple. Just choose the photos you'd like to share, choose the friends with whom you'd like to share them, and that's it, you're done. Your friends will receive a push notification with those photos. The photos will appear in an album right in the Photos app. And you and your friends can all even comment on the photos. In addition to iOS, shared photo streams go to your Mac with iPhoto and Aperture. You can view them in a web browser on Windows. And you can even view them on your television using Apple TV. And that is shared photo streams. <laughs> Next are some great enhancements to mail, starting with VIPs. VIP allows you to mark someone whose messages you really want to be notified about. So once you mark someone as a VIP and they, they send you an email, you'll get a notification right in the lock screen of that email the same way you would for a text message. It's also really easy to find messages from your VIPs when you're looking at the message list. They have a star next to them. And we've added a VIP mailbox which gathers together all of those messages from your VIPs. And for those of you who like to flag messages, we've also added a flagged mailbox as well. We've also made it really easy for you to insert photos and video right in a Compose window. And you can now open password protected Office Docs right on your iOS device. And this last one, we added a fun new animation to pull and refresh your message list. So some great features for mail. Next up is a brand new app we're calling Passbook. Now Passbook is the simplest way to get all of your passes in one place. There are a lot of really great apps on the App Store that are starting to put passes, boarding passes, and tickets into the apps. There are some airline apps, like this one from United, where you get your boarding pass right in the app. There's some store card apps, like this one from Starbucks, where you get the store card right in the app, and you can use it to scan and pay for your coffee. And there are some movie ticket apps, like this one, where your movie ticket goes right into the app. Now, this is great, but the problem is, when you get to the movie theater or to the airport, you have to fumble around to find the app and then find the ticket or the pass within the app. So Passbook takes all of these passes and combines them together in one place and integrates it right into the OS. And they are beautiful. Here's a movie ticket from Fandango. We've created templates to make it really easy for all of you developers to build these great passes and tickets. And it integrates right in with the lock screen. So when you get to the movie theater, your ticket automatically pops up on the lock screen. Slide across here, scan it in, go in. Let me go ahead and give you a quick demo of Passbook. All right, so here's Passbook. I've got some tickets. So here's a Fandango ticket for a movie. Again, these are beautiful. I have a nice uh, ticket for a Giants game here. 
We have store cards. Here's a card for Starbucks. And again, you see it has the balance there. When you use this to scan and pay for your coffee, the balance automatically gets updated. Here's a store card for the Apple Store. We have boarding passes. Here's one for Amtrak. And here are a couple for United Airlines. And again, when we have two, we group them together. Here's a coupon for Target. Here's an express checking card for a hotel. Now, when, when you're done with a card, just flip it over. There's a trash can at the top left. We had a little bit of fun with this uh, deleting your cards. <laughs> now, as I said, this is all integrated in with the phone and with the lock screen. So if I have my phone locked and I go to my favorite Starbucks, up comes my Starbucks card. Slide across it, brings on my card, scan, pay for my coffee, and I'm out. It's that easy. And all these cards are actually live. So if my gate changed, I just got an update for my United Airlines gate change. It comes up, I slide across here, there's my boarding pass updated right in the app. So that is Passbook, the best way to get all of your passes, tickets together in one place. Next is guided access. We set out to make the most accessible devices of anyone for all of our customers. And we're really proud of how the accessibility community has been adopting iOS devices. Now we've been surprised by the number of children with autism who've been flocking to our devices, especially our iPads. And we want to make that experience even better. There are a lot of great apps on the App Store like this one that are designed specifically for children with autism. The problem is there are some controls, some settings and other controls in the app that you don't want the child to tap while they're using the app. So guided access allows you to just circle those controls with your finger. We'll figure out which ones you mean. And we'll disable those controls for you. The child now can use the app without accidentally hitting those. And we lock the device into a single app mode. So hitting the home button doesn't leave the app. Guided access is great. It allows children with autism to learn independently on their iPad. Now, this is great beyond children with autism. It's really single app mode. And single app mode has a lot of applications. There are a lot of schools who have been adopting iPads. And some are starting to actually administer tests on their iPads. Well, single app mode allows the teacher to lock that iPad into the test so the students can't go look up the answers in Safari. And this also works great for museums who use iPads and iPod Touches for guided tours. So single app mode and guided access. <laughs> Next is Maps. In iOS 6, we have built an entire new mapping solution from the ground up, and it is beautiful. This is what Lake Tahoe looks like. We're doing all the cartography ourselves. Here's New York City, San Francisco. This is a worldwide effort. We're covering the world. Here's Italy, New Zealand, Singapore. Norway, Paris. I'm going to go through every city. In the, <laughs> the beautiful, beautiful maps. Now, part of maps is local search. You have to be able to find businesses and points of interest. And so we've already ingested more than 100 million business listings around the world to make a great local search. Once you find a business, bring up the info card, and it's beautiful. We've integrated it with Yelp, so you get reviews and ratings and lots of photos right in the card. We're also building a traffic service. 
We have this great traffic view, so it's easy to see where the incidents are or where the, the slow traffic is. And on top of that, we overlay the incidents. So it's easier for you to figure out whether traffic's likely to speed up in a given location anytime soon. In addition to other data sources, we're using anonymous, real-time crowdsourced data right from our iOS users to keep this traffic fresh and up to date. We are also building in turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It's really simple. Once you find a place you'd like to go, just tap on that quick route button and you're on your way. As you're going, we'll be monitoring the traffic. We'll give you your ETA. If the traffic slows down in front of you, we'll update your ETA, and then we'll start looking to reroute you around it to find a faster route. And if we do, we'll offer it to you. And again, you're on your way around the traffic. All of this works from the lock screen as well, if you have it plugged into your car. And of course, we've integrated it with Siri. So you just ask Siri to take you somewhere, and you're on your way. You can ask questions along your route, like where can I get gas? And it'll look for convenient gas stations along your route. And of course, the kids can ask the age-old question. <laughs> now, a really fun feature that we're adding to our maps is something we call flyover. We have been flying major metropolitan areas around the world in helicopters and in planes, and we've been building up a 3D photographic model of these places, and it is gorgeous. This is what it looks like on the iPhone. It looks great on the iPad. Let me just go ahead and give you a demo of our maps. All right, so here's our maps. They're all vector-based, so everything is really fast. You zoom in and out. You can rotate, and we rotate all the labels. When you zoom in far enough, you'll see buildings start to appear. You can tap on a point of interest. Here's MoMA. Get the info card. Again, beautiful. Get reviews and ratings from Yelp. Lots of photos. We also do 3D. So I can zoom in and see just what MoMA looks like. Can zoom out a little bit here. Sort of move around the city. Rotate around. Let me zoom back in there. Beautiful. I'll go back to 2D. We have satellite view, of course. Here's our satellite view. But what I really want to show you is flyover. So let's go ahead and choose the Transamerica Pyramid. Now, this is not a movie. This is being rendered in real time. So I can go ahead and rotate this myself. I can change the camera angle, fly through it myself. Just beautiful. Let me choose another place. How about the Sydney Opera House? And again, I can rotate this. Let's turn it so I can look back at the city right behind the Opera House. I'll zoom out a little bit, change the camera angle. And that is flyover.
Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is turn by turn directions. So we'll switch to the other device. We can't all go in a, get in a car and drive around, so we have a simulator of our turn by turn directions here. I'll go ahead and choose Coit Tower. I'll tap on the quick route button. Gives me three different options. I'll choose route two. Let's go ahead and start. Starting route to Coit Tower. In 750 feet, turn right onto Greenwich Street. Turn right onto Greenwich Street, then turn left onto Grant Avenue. Now you can watch this adaptive cinematic camera angle as we go through corners. In 400 feet, turn left onto Grant Avenue. When two turns are close together, we put both signs up for you. In 300 feet, turn right onto Lombard Street. You see we have the, the footprint of all these buildings correct. In a quarter mile, arrive at your destination. Now at any point I can get the ETA up top, it says one minute. Simulator's going a lot faster than you should drive in San Francisco, we'll get there faster. <laughs> I can also just tap on overview, which allows me to zoom out. I can see any part of the route at any time. Zoom in over here, just sort of pan around, or at any point, just tap to resume. You see it coming around Telegraph Hill here. Arrived at Coit Tower. And that is turn by turn directions. So a brand new mapping solution from the ground up in iOS 6. And these are only 10 of the more than 200 new user features in iOS 6. There was so much more in here. There are game center challenges. So now if you hit an achievement or a high score, it's easy to challenge your friends to try to beat you. We've improved the privacy controls so you can manage whether an app has access to your contacts, calendar, or photos. We've completely redesigned the stores to make them just gorgeous and fluid and better promote your apps. We're working on made for iPhone hearing aids. We want the experience of people with hearing aids to be the best it's ever been on an iPhone. We've added per account signatures in mail. So if you have a personal mail account and a work mail account, you can have different signatures for each. We've added lost mode to find my iPhone. So if you've lost or misplaced your iPhone or iPad, or your iPhone in this case, you can send a phone number directly to that phone, like your home phone number or your spouse's phone number. And now, if someone finds it, they can just tap on there and it'll call that phone number back, making it that much easier for you to get your phone back. And all those features you heard about for China, for OS X, We've added all of these to iOS 6 as well. So iOS 6 is a phenomenal release for our customers. It is also an incredible release for all of our developers. We continue to strive to build the best platform on the planet for developers. There's APIs for PassKit, so all those passes you saw for Passbook are really simple to build with that API. There's a Reminders API. We have in-app content purchases. So if your app today links out, say, to iTunes to buy music that someone heard in your app, you can now sell that music right in your app with an in-app content purchase sheet. Transit apps. When building maps, we looked around and realized the best transit apps uh, for metros, for hiking, for biking, are coming from our developers. And so instead of trying to build those ourselves, we are going to integrate and feature and promote your apps for transit right within the Maps app in iOS 6. So iOS 6 is a great release for all of our developers. And we're giving out a beta of iOS 6 to our developers today. iOS 6 will ship this fall. It'll support the iPhone 3GS and later, the second and third generation iPad, and the fourth generation 
iPod Touch. And that is iOS 6. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Tim. Thank you. So what do you think? Isn't that incredible? You've seen some incredible products this morning. Let's review. The new MacBook Pro delivers extreme performance in a radically thin and light design with this stunning retina display, the world's highest resolution display. It's the most advanced Mac we have ever built. OS X Mountain Lion, the ninth major release of the world's best desktop operating system with iCloud and the new notification center, messages, dictation, Facebook integration, it's the best OS X yet. iOS 6, with 200 new features to the world's most advanced mobile operating system, with an entirely new Maps app that's incredible, Facebook integration, shared photo streams, Passbook, and much, much more. Only Apple could make such amazing hardware, software, and services. We are so proud of these products as they are perfect examples of what Apple does best. And ultimately, it's why people choose to come to work at Apple and with Apple to do the very best work of their lives, to create products that empower people to do great things, to make a difference in the lives of so many people around the world. The products we make, combined with the apps that you create, can fundamentally change the world. And really, I can't think of a better reason of getting up in the morning. It's, I hope you have a fantastic week. I want to, to uh, wish you the best week ever, the best conference ever. Thank you very much for coming and joining us.